they will not they will immediately go into before the second coming and the judgment and their fate so what's interesting here in 16 17 16 17 to 21 now we're going to look at those verses we're going to reread the scriptural passage and what we see here is there's a cryptic language being used by the great apostle a cryptic language and the example that elder Athanasius gives is really interesting i'm going to introduce you to it many of you probably are not familiar with saint cosmas et de los saint cosmas uh the great missionary and preacher of uh of the orthodox people in greece during the ottomans in the 18th century there's an example that's given by the elder to explain the the use and the purpose of this cryptic language that we read in 16 70, 21. so let's read it again hopefully you can read it on the screen it's a bit small forgive me but you can hear at least and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings or sounds in the Greek. And there was a great earthquake and such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. And the great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give her under her the cup of wine of the fierceness of his wrath and every island fled away and the mountains were not found and they fell upon a men of great hail out of heaven a great hail out of heaven every stone about the weight of a talent and men blaspheme god because of the plague of the hail but the plague thereof was exceedingly great all right so we 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 bore you a little bit but not much because it's wonderful to reread scripture we hear it many different times at many at many times differently and we focus a little bit more. So that's why we read this sometimes. We want you to focus here. There's a cryptic language of sorts uh, that's not so clear. But it, it's it's in the time now, just after Nero, or Nero, depending on how you want to pronounce it, right? So that the Roman Empire is brutal and ruthless to the Christians. And he's writing a text, it's bringing into, let's say, uh, written text, this vision. And he has to, he pastorally, let's say, keep in mind who he's talking to and who's going to read the, the, the book. And so he purposely uses cryptic, cryptic language since everything he writes about pertains to the historical Rome, historical Roman Empire. Rome serves as a type, typos or type of the end of days. Just like Babylon. So you see there are pictures of Babylon on the right and Rome on the left. And Rome is a type of Babylon. To speak about the coming of the Antichrist, the God of opposing powers within history, St. John uses her, Rome, as a prototype. It's a type of Babylon, right? It's now Babylon then, Rome now, same reality. We talked about this last week. He purposely manages to cloud all these things, purposely clouds things. That is why it is very difficult for us to decode revelation. It is truly very difficult. However, time will always reveal the reality of the events. And Elder Athanasius gives us an historical event to explain how this is the case. We have this great and amazing figure, St. Cosmas at Delos, a monk from the monastery of Philotheo, on Mount Athos, just like Elder Ephraim was a monk from Philotheo and came to America. He went all around northern Greece, all, actually all around a bunch of Greece, uh, in, uh, in western Greece and even in central Greece, teaching and preaching and, and regenerating the people of God who had been under the Ottoman, Ottoman Muslim Turks for quite some time. Why is this relevant? Well, listen to the story. So this great saint, he is working underneath the, the, the authority uh, and has to have in mind the authority of the Turks, the Antichrist powers of the day. The Turkish ruler of Northern Greece, Ali Pasha, Ali Pasha, loved the saint very much. He had great respect for St. Cosmas. 
He revered him as a saint, and he had great respect for him, enough to ask the saint about future endeavors. So he actually went to him, as Muslims do to this day in, 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 in uh, present-day Turkey, Asia Minor, in Constantinople, there are droves of Muslims who go to the Christian holy places, the sites of the Mother of God, icons of the Mother of God, and St. George in particular, asking and hoping for miracles and hoping for spiritual you know relief from whatever problems whatever they have so it's very interesting that for many muslims and of course a lot of those muslims in that part of the world were formerly christians they were christianized forcefully whatever uh in different ways they were they ended up becoming muslims so there's a deep consciousness of the saints and saint george is one of the great greatest wonder workers and saints of the church you know from the third and fourth centuries so Anyway, he had respect, even though he was not a Christian. And he was very, very ambitious, Ali Pasha. He wanted to become the sultan. He wanted to take the place of the sultan in Constantinople, right? So this is the city of the empire of the Ottomans, of course, the famous Constantinople, the city of Constantine. And he wanted St. Cosmos to tell him, am I going to, what am I going to, what's going to happen? Am I going to become... The sultan, you know, the, the, the king of kings in the Ottoman Empire. His son, Vili Pasha, was a true tyrant, by the way. A true tyrant. tyrant. So this is uh, uh, the Ottoman Pasha of the westernmost part of Rumelia, called Pashalik of Yanina. So this is western modern Greece. And he was, you know, we don't need to go into that. He was, he was ruthless. All right, so this is the son. He was a ruler in the area near Mount Olympus, near Tirvanos, Tirnavos, sorry. That's not far from where Elder Athanasius was at the time, where his monastery was. During his rule, St. Gideon, December 30th, the feast day, and St. George of Rapsani were both martyrs in 1818. St. George was martyred first then on March 15th, so March 5th. So. This is the kind of person we're talking about, right? They were ruthless. They killed Christians, and there were many martyrs under these kinds of rulers. Ali Pasha approached St. Cosmas and asked him about the issue of Constantinople. St. Cosmas told him, you will go to Constantinople in a red fez and a red beard. That's all he said. A red fez, which is the hat, and a red beard. But he didn't have a red beard. So what kind of beard is that? It wasn't clear. He didn't say it. It was cryptic. St. Cosmas could have replied without this cryptic language. He could have said, look, my pasha, the sultan will drown your rebellion in blood. Your head will be surgically removed from your body, and it will be transported to Constantinople, soaked in your blood. You will never become sultan. Your head your severed head will let everyone know what happens to those who rebel against the great sultan. Okay, that's really what happened. <laughs> and that's what he's saying, but he's saying it in a cryptic way. That was the reality, right? And he didn't say that. What did he say? He said, you will go to Constantinople. But with a red beard and a red fez. So he told them the truth, but he said it in a cryptic way. What would have happened if he had said it bluntly? He probably would have been martyred. So he said it in a cryptic way. And St. John the Evangelist basically does the same thing here. St. John the Evangelist speaks in a cryptic way. He's speaking about Rome, pitiful Rome, the deceiver of the nations. He calls her Babylon. He calls her by the harlot who sits on the red beast that sits on the, some waters or hills. He in pur it purposely does not make it clear. He muddles things. And it is very dear, difficult, therefore, to decode Revelation. But time reveals the events. Time makes things clear. And that was the way it was with St. Cosmas. Can St. Cosmas... And his prophecy was only made clear when the sultan's guards beheaded Ali Pasha and took his blood-soaked head to the sultan in Constantinople. 
And they said, behold, the prophecy of Sinkos Mas has been fulfilled. That's when they understood the prophecy of Sinkos Mas was when the, the blood soaked beard was brought to Constantinople. The same thing happens, is the, is the case rather, with St. John. And they will say in those days, behold, the prophecy of the revelation, it came to pass. That's a great example from Elder Athanasius to help us understand why the cryptic language, right? Why the cryptic language from the great apostle? I'm still...